Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Discover 2016 Las Vegas. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Now, here's your host, Dave Vellante. Welcome back to Discover 16, everybody. This is theCUBE, I'm Dave Vellante. And we're here at wall-to-wall -wall coverage for three days from Las Vegas. This is our sixth year covering HP, now E, Discover. Alan Andrioli is here, he's the Senior Vice President and General Manager of the Global Service, Servers Business Unit. Longtime CUBE guest, Alan, welcome back. Good to see you again. Dave, great to see you again. Yeah, so business is good. We were talking off camera and we had talked earlier to some of your colleagues about 80 consecutive quarters of market share growth as quantified by uh, IDC. So congratulations on that, very Thank proud. You. It's like, that's better than New England Patriots. I mean, I'm probably not a football fan from New England, but nonetheless, you know, it's these dynasties that people talk about. Um, but people want to knock the leader down. Right? How have you been able to maintain 80 straight quarters of market share growth? Yeah, you've got to celebrate good results, and uh, this was a very good quarter. So the first, uh, the first half year was, uh, I think we grew uh, almost double single digits, so the, the server business in constant currency. We also grew in dollars in, you know, uh, three, over 3% three in- So sorry, high single digits in growth this quarter? Almost or? double digits. Okay. Yeah, in a declining overall market because the overall economy has been, uh, has been a little difficult. So we have been winning significant market share in the second so quarter. So constant currency, you're growing almost double digits yeah. in a market that's declining. Yeah. That's substantial. Uh, and you're stealing yeah. share from and, everybody? And, or? and the way we did, and we are the only company, according to IDC, we are the only major player who have been growing. The other four, out of the top five, the other four have been declining. And is this because of the, the turmoil with God, for instance, the IBM selling its x86 business, the Dell EMC merger? And you have Dell EMC, you have, uh, you have IBM becoming Lenovo, and what's left of IBM being uh, a little disrupted. Uh, you have Cisco who is now apparently plateauing, you know, they, they started with Blades and they are plateauing. We won market share in Blades, we won market share in Racks, we won market share in Density Optimized. So we, we had, uh, you know, we had great results. I'm naturally a little bit of a paranoid, so you know, I know that the future has to be won, but so far our customers have been great with us in continuing to trust us in a, in a market that has changed profoundly versus what it was uh, two years ago. So we have, uh, we have gone to new places, and these new places are paying off. We've, we have very different business today than we were two, three years ago, and this, this is working well. Well, one of, the, one of the things that we've noted, and as I said, we've been here watching the progression for six years, is optimizing on workloads is a strategy that you embarked on as a company many, many years ago. Yeah. And that's come to fruition. We saw the, you know, the, the reveal with uh, Apollo, and. And, and other markets that you've targeted. Talk about that strategy of, yeah. of workload so optimization. To, to my knowledge, this strategy is unmatched on the market still, right? Because you say we have a lot of competition, new people, and new entrants coming. Yes, and we can discuss about competitors, but typically they come and attack on one, one place. And what we have done is we've completely mapped the market, we've segmented the market in terms of workload and customer segments, and we've used a modular approach where we spend like, to simplify, half of our R&D to do all the key modules, and typically it's moving from generation to generation, and the other half of the R&D to specialize our offering to yield the best outcome for the typical workload that these people typically use. And this is work phenomenal. You know, we were not a very well-known player in HPC a while back. We are now by far the world leader in HPC, and we have discussions with government and so on. In big data storage, we are, we are so big that we just were announced by ITC as the world leader in total storage, including internal storage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We including were just talking to Patrick about that. Base storage, oil. right? <laughs> um, we are now entering into IoT. We are the largest provider to the cloud service provider, so we are the largest provider to the cloud. Um, uh, we continue to be the largest provider of ProLiant for the enterprise, and you know, we are launching innovative solutions in SMB with Easy Connect. I don't know if you are doing the coverage of Easy Connect. We are inventing a new IT form factor for the for the the branch or the or the small enterprise. We've only heard a little bit about that. Talk yeah. more about this uh, Easy Connect. So it's. You know, we're trying new things. Um, and so this new thing is um, basically we saw, the thinking process was the following. Um, 
who would have the highest likelihood of looking at the public cloud? People who are not IT friendly, which means small companies or places where there is no IT specialist. So what could we do to run IT in a box that does wireless con connectivity, that manages your, um, uh, you know, your, your, what you pay to Amazon or to, to Azure or whatever, that gives you some basic storage if there is stuff that you want to, to store in-house or whatever. And we created an appliance which has the form factor of, you know, it's like uh, slim like this, and this is the size, more or less. You can put it on the desk, on the wall, on the ceiling, or whatever you'd like, and it does everything you want. You don't take care of it. So if you have a, ch a chain of, uh, you know, uh, 1,000 stores, you have 1,000 of them, they all call home and they are managed centrally. If you are just by yourself, you preset it at the beginning, and, and then it, it does your, your... So we're trying to go to these places where the future of IT, of compute, will be. That, and we're very proud of this one and hope it will work, and we do it on a sub subscription basis. We look at IoT, and we felt, can it be that there will be the sensors in the analog world that kind of go to a gateway, which is where the industry is today, and then the gateway will call the cloud or the data center, and then there will be this gigantic amount of communication. It's crazy. It's going to multiply you know, the connectivity in the world by a factor of 100 in the next five years <laughs> if the IoT takes off the way we think it will. Right. Or is there compute at the edge? If you need compute at the edge, you need to then you know, calculate everything that you can before you go to the cloud. And this is where we have reinvented Moochot with Edge Line 1000 and 4000 that we have just launch. So we try to be very innovative because as a market leader, we need to look at all these growth segments. If you stay on the core segment where everybody goes, which is going against ProLiant, which is by far the market leader, the L360, the L380, we are selling millions and everybody is trying to copy that and go cheaper, obviously we will get hurt. So we need to get to all these places. And so far, so good. So you're absolutely right. You're right on about all this, this network traffic that's going back and forth. And Dr. Tom was on earlier. Oh, you had Dr. Tom. Yes, and he, was he shared with me some IDC figures that said 40% of the, the, the data will stay at the edge. I will tell you right now, my colleagues at IDC, no way those numbers, there's no way 60% of the data is going to go back to a central location. It's going to be much more at the edge than 40%. This is just. It's going to be too expensive. Then and Dr. Too Tom slow, is going to be super to successful. Latency. Yes, oh, yeah, yeah, because well, that's our that's yeah, our conclusion. That's it, why it, we're it, doing it, what we do. Fundamentally, the edge computing yes. is is critical, and and there's no question in our mind anyway, and the, the models that we've run. So I think those numbers are very conservative. I think it's much much higher at the edge. So and nobody, you know, you hear a lot about people saying, oh, take censor to cloud. But there's a lot of stuff that happens in between, and it seems like your strategy is to put compute. And where it belongs. And, so yes, and, and I'm not done with this because it's sinking process. And the cloud may not be the cloud. It may be the clouds. Yeah, yeah, it will be the clouds. Because it's hard, you know, for me, it is still hard to believe that 10 years from now, 90% of the data of the planet will be owned by two companies and that everything will be who controls what, you know? So I think clouds will be heterogeneous. It's, very, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens in Europe, in Germany, in France, in, we know already in China, in Russia, but yeah. you know, what about Japan or whatever? So there is going to be national fragmentation to a degree. And then I believe there will be also potential fragmentation of the cloud by workload because one size doesn't fit all. When you run, you'll be, IT is going to run our life. Uh, I am my own CIO, you are, oh, I took it off my phone. But you know, we are all our own CIO. It is so important. It cannot be that one or two companies are going to run. So our positioning is that we are the one that takes you to the journey. We took you to the data center. We are taking you now to the hybrid cloud with Synergy and beyond. We're going to take you to the IoT and so on. We are the company that is fully vested in this transformation of IT for the enterprise. So workload segmentation. Check, you made a bet there. Hybrid cloud, you're betting that, probably a good bet. Uh, IoT, exciting, huge potential market. You're also making a big bet on just memory-centric computing. That's yes. the future, the new wave, which potentially adds new value that we haven't even imagined before. You have the Star Trek video, things like that, which is you know, out there. But 
talk about that a little bit in terms of, I know it's off in the future, although we're seeing bits and pieces come in today. We had DreamWorks on earlier, talking about how that's affecting their business, non-volatile. Yeah, so, so um, I would like to say to the current horizon, which is what DreamWorks probably was talking about, because that's what they love, which is persistent memory. Yes. So we, in, in the memory business, or in the storage business, what counts is how big and how fast. And then there is another dimension, which is, does it stay when it's on and off, or does it yeah. goes away? And so we ask ourselves the question, how can we, because more and more of the apps are requiring uh, direct memory access with very, very, very small latency in much bigger, bigger volumes. And they want this to be persistent. And if you can get to have much more memory being persistent around, around the CPU, you multiply the performance of the application. So we invented what we call, uh, so you know, in a, in a server you can have the option to put memory modules. It's called a DIM. You can put as many as the server can afford to. And now we have made two sides to this memory. One side is a DRAM. DRAM is as fast as it gets. But the problem is when you switch the power off, it disappears. So on the other side, we've put a flash. It's slower than a DRAM. It's much faster than a disk or, you know, or a tape but it's much slower than the DRAM. So all the flash does is to store the data of the DRAM when the DRAM goes off. There is a battery in the server. Automatically, when the, when the, when the server is powered off for whatever reason, the data gets in the flash. So we've made the speed of a DRAM persistent. And in, in a number of applications, customers like DreamWorks, they love it. Mm -hmm. They love it. So that's a type of innovation that we are doing. And this is not by segment. This is our foundational. This, we, we bring this type of innovation to all the segments, to all the servers we have. But this is a type of innovation that we do on top and beyond the rest of the industry to stay also the market leader as a, as a whole. Right. Excellent. And that's a stepping stone to a broader vision, right, which is we see in the machine. We'll hear more about that as well right. as the rest of the show. Alan, we, we got to leave it there. Thanks so much uh, for coming on theCUBE. I love talking to you because you're such a clear thinker. You know this market very well. Congratulations on all the, all the success. I'll give you the last word on Discover 2016 in Vegas. We're looking forward to being in London again in, in December, but yes. what's the bumper sticker here? This is great. There are 14,000 people here. It's very, uh, very vibrant. And this is the first Discover we have as Hewlett Packard Enterprise by ourselves. And it gives us a lot of focus. We are much more agile. And um, I think, the, I mean, you know, I had the, this morning a, a session for compute. And we didn't have enough people, space in the room for the people to come in and, and listen to the story. So I think this, I was, you know, I was very happy with that. Standing room only, we love it. And yeah. we're, we're agile on the queue, bringing you all the, the innovations here from HPE Discover 2016. Keep it right there, buddy. We'll be back with our next guest right after this. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, David. Oh,